Hi YouTube, this is Joe Kelton with Kelton Cutlery. You can find us on the web, keltoncutlery.com. Alright, I told you to do a couple of videos today. Um, did the one uh, introducing the new camera. Uh, did the one on the uh, how to square up a drill press table. This one right here, what we're going to do is um, uh, hopefully make a better video. I noticed on the other two, this mic is way more sensitive than what the old one was. It was actually picking up the radio that um, I thought was too low for it to pick up but it picked it up anyway so uh, I'm gonna do that and then I've got a pointer it seems like that autofocus seems to want to pick up on everything and I like to talk with my hands so maybe if I point with uh, something a little bit smaller it won't focus so much and it'll make the viewing a little bit easier anyway so I use toaster ovens to uh, to temper my knives not only tempering the knives but also um, forming kydex uh, warming up sheaths before I, I wax them. Um, just a whole bunch of things uh, you use in the shop um, or, or use a toaster in the shop for. Uh, this really saves on um, you know relations in the house uh, using a $60 or a $5 toaster versus the, the oven in the kitchen. Um, trust me on that, just get a toaster. Anyway, so this is my old toaster and this one right here is a brand spanking new one uh, to replace one that I had uh, a flea market type one that burned up a lot of times you get these toasters at garage sales flea markets thrift stores things like that for you know just a couple of bucks um, my old one it was a, a digital one um, I had it set for 440C and Kydex and then I also used it for um, heating up sheaths uh, before I waxed them um, for knife sheaths uh, so it burned up and I decided to go ahead and get I figured I'd spend the, the 60 or 70 bucks and get a brand spanking new one so I figured while I had the whole setup out I'd go ahead and walk you guys through um, how I use a toaster oven for tempering knives so you see I've got two of them you see this one right here doesn't even have the knobs on the uh, function and the timer I've also got a timer set up here on a power strip uh, to run these things. Toaster ovens, um, by nature, they're not going to be near as accurate as your kitchen oven or a, as a, uh, um, a standard heat treat oven. Um, I built a um, 220 volt PID controlled uh, heat treating oven that I used to, to heat knives up to quench them. Um, but I don't really like those for tempering and the reason why that is is that those heating elements or at least the one that I built the heating elements are, are really strong I mean I, uh, I now I did overbuild the thing which I tend to do and when those heating elements fire they put, up, put off a tremendous amount of heat and a lot of times it seems to me like that's not what we want for tempering a knife I know right after I built the oven um, I decided to, to warm up a leather sheath for a chopper uh, you know so that I could uh, dip it in the wax and I set the PID controller for like 200 degrees over you know say 15 minutes or so went ahead and stuck the uh, the sheath in there hit the go button and about a minute and a half later I smelt this awesome awful smell um, when that heating element when it fired it toasted that sheath I mean right now it was all over and done with so that was when I started thinking maybe those big powerful heat treating ovens weren't such the best weren't such a great thing for tempering i had been using a toaster and uh, having really good luck with it but you have to set the toaster up right okay so this toaster right here all it does is temper 1095 and 52100 you can see that the uh, the tempering or the the temperature on it is set at 450. But my I've got two oven thermometers in here. They stay with this oven. They never come out. They never move. When this is set properly, which it is set, I never even uh, touch the dial. The top thermometer reads 350, and the bottom thermometer reads 385. 
if that dial ever gets moved and these uh, thermometers aren't reading that 350 and 385 then I know that something's wrong with a toaster and I need to either get another one um, that some, somehow this one got bumped uh, whatever but anyway so this oven right here is just for 52 100 and 1095 when you go to set up a new oven like I said even your kitchen oven in your kitchen uh, you know big nice lots of insulation uh, very good controls my appliance guy says even your kitchen oven can cycle 75 degrees above or below your set point or at least that's what he's seen over the years um, yours at home might only go 25 degrees and a lot of times the temperature settings aren't accurate for what temperature is actually going on inside the oven that's with your kitchen oven at home in your kitchen. They're real nice, you know, tons of insulation, way better controls. These, I spent, I think it was $70 brand new for this Black & Decker. It doesn't have near the insulation, it doesn't have near the controls that your kitchen oven does. So you would think maybe it's not going to work. Well, yes and no. So what we do is we use the steel to tell us what to set this toaster at. Okay, since we know this toaster is going to cycle above and below its set point, so let's say you have it set at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, you can just bet on the fact that that toaster is going to cycle at least 25 to 50 degrees above and below that. You might get lucky and it doesn't, but just, uh, just bet on that fact. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. So this new oven, you can see it's all nice and clean because it's only been in the shop a couple of weeks. I have got three thermometers in there. They're marked uh, L for left, M for middle, and R for right. That way they'll never get confused and these th thermometers will stay with this toaster until this toaster burns up. The way to you set an oven for a particular steel that you're going to use um, I'm actually going to get another one for uh, 440C and Kydex and this one the way it's been acting I'm going to leave it set up for 5160. So as an example let's say I quench a, um, I'll, you know, a chopper uh, like a competition chopper that's, that's big enough to fit in here. I'll go ahead and forge out the chopper, grind it, heat it up for, in the forge for the quench or in the, um, the kiln and get the steel hard. Once the steel is hard, then I'll go ahead and grind it down to, you know, roughly what I think that, um, you know, kind of a middle ground for most of my grinds. Then I will go ahead and set this toaster up at, say, now, 5160, I usually temper it at 375 in the kitchen oven for, for real long choppers that won't fit in these toasters. So I would go ahead and set this one up to where all three of these thermometers are reading as close to 300 degrees Fahrenheit as I can get them. Run two two-hour cycles and then do an edge destruction test uh, over the brass rod, which um, the explanation for that is in my brass rod test video, I think. Anyway, what you do is you grind a nice thin edge on that and then you push that edge to failure and then note how that edge failed. If Now, if we only set this up at 300 degrees, more than likely that edge is going to chip out. So then what we do is we'd go ahead and we'd move our temperature uh, indicator up to where our thermometers were reading another 10 to 15 degrees hotter than what they were the cycle before. Temper it for another two hours, test a different portion of the edge, and see if it still chips out. If it does, which more than likely it will, we adjust it up another 10 to 15 degrees. You keep doing this until the edge just quits chipping out or until the edge fails the way that you would like it to fail. So if you want the edge to be a little bit chippy, then call it good when it's just the right amount of chip. If you would rather that it uh, uh, bent over and stayed bent and run, want to run a little on the softer side, then do that until the edge fails the way that you want it to fail. Now make another knife exactly like the one that you just made and with that same setting go ahead and run two or three two hour cycles 
with an hour or two uh, in between the cycles so that the knife can cool down to room temperature and double check and make sure that that edge fails the way that you want it to fail. Now those two test blades are just test blades you know I wouldn't sell those or anything like that because you're using those to set the the temperature in your oven. Now since you're setting your temperature by the the way that the steel you're setting your temperature according to what the, according to how you want that steel to fail. Now you know that this oven is going to cycle up and below your set point. You know that this temperature probably has nothing to do with the temperature that's actually in the oven. But as long as you calibrate the oven to the steel and the edge and how you want that edge to fail, then more than likely as long as that oven stays fairly consistent um, from day to day and week to week, you'll end up getting good consistent results. I hope I made that about as clear as mud. Anyway, set your your temperature. I mean these these thermometers, it doesn't really matter what they say is uh, as long as the edge on your test blades is failing the way that you want it to fail. Then you write down the the readings on all these thermometers and then make sure that every single time that you put that type of steel into the oven that they all read the same and you, everything should work out pretty well. At least it's about the the best way that I've found to, um, to temper knife blades. So like I said, um, this toaster right here, I did that with 1095 and 52100. This is going to end up being a dedicated 5160 oven. Um, it's a convection oven and for some reason when you turn it on uh, like right now it's at 200 all the thermometers are reading about 200 degrees give or take 10 degrees when you turn it on at the the hash mark that I have marked on it at 200 uh, it takes about 30 minutes what will happen is, is this oven comes up to 250 and then once it kind of preheats everything then it comes back down to around 200 degrees and stays there. So I'm not sure if that has to do with the, um, uh, the convection. Maybe it's taking a while for the, uh, the thermal couple wherever it is uh, and it's having a lag time in between that and uh, the thermostat or it may have a digital you know a, um, a board in there and that's what it's programmed to do. So anyway, so this toaster right here, I'm going to go through that whole process for 5160 and it will be a 5160 only oven and the, the setting will just stay where, wherever I set it um, and it'll never move. I'll end up getting another one, probably a, well, a digital one, I just ordered it up um, and use it for uh, 440C and for Kydex and for um, uh, heating up leather sheaths. Let me check see how much time I have. I have six minutes. So the other nice feature that I really like about using toasters um, are these timers right here. Like I said, I've got a power strip right here that will cut power to the whole system. And then each toaster has is plugged in to a timer and then that timer is plugged in to the um, power strip. Now these are just analog timers, you know, they're not digital or anything. And all you do to set them is you push these in and then as the time goes by it pushes up that little tab light comes on that toaster comes on so if you're doing it's a really nice way to go ahead and set it and forget it so let's say you uh, you start off the day and you're you heat treated 10 1095 blades well this is a 1095 toaster go ahead and load those blades up and uh, one of these. Um, let me grab a. You would take your blade, load it up into that. That holds, you know, it nice and up so that the air circulates around it. Put the whole thing in there. Bring it up. I usually, with 1095 on this toaster, I set it for a three-hour cycle, hour off, two hours on 
hour off, two hours on. So I would set uh, five to eight, hour off, two hours, hour off, two hours, and then stay off. So I could set that up in the morning and then it'll go ahead and run through its whole cycle during the day and I don't even have to do anything. And then at the end of the day, come back and, you know, turn everything off. And then the next day, go ahead and pull the knives out and they're ready to, to go ahead and grind them. Um, the digital thermometer or digital toaster, you won't be able to do that because generally speaking, those when they lose power, they reset to zero and off. Um, which is okay because you don't want them going haywire and messing with your temper cycles. Uh, you know, I want to say that's about it. Um, I guess, well, well, no. No, we won't go over that. Anyway, so when you buy a toaster, whether it's a $5 flea market toaster or a brand spanking new $70 toaster from Walmart, when you buy it, pick up these oven thermometers are about five bucks a piece. Buy two or three of those oven thermometers, mark them somehow so you know that they go back in the position in the oven where they, they're supposed to be. Set your edge deformation or set your toaster according to the edge deformation that, and how you want the edge to fail and then leave it set mark it just for that steel type and uh, you should be pretty good or should be pretty well good to go I know I have I've been through I don't know I think this might be my sixth toaster um, which is probably why I decided to go ahead and spend seventy dollars on a brand spanking new one versus five dollars on a flea market one maybe this one will last a little bit longer Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope the video turns out a little bit nicer with the new camera mic. And um, hopefully maybe I'm getting used to it. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.